Hey, what's going on everybody? Back with another how-to. Today we're going to be doing the front and rear brakes on this 2009 TL. Now this should fall in line with any 4th gen TL, which is 2009 to 2014, so let's get into it now. All right, guys, so we are at the front here. Got the car on jack stands, of course. Now, first step, obviously, is gonna be removing the wheel, of course. So this actually has aftermarket lug nuts, which are a 21 mil, but if you have the OE lug nuts, they're probably a 19 or 21 as well. So got a 21 here on an impact. We're just gonna fire all five of these right out. All right, guys, so we got the wheel off, of course. All the lug nuts are to the side, so Next thing I like to do with rotors that are equipped with these retainer screws, as you can see right here, these little Phillips screws, I like to get those off first. We are doing the rotors, so I just wanna get these fired off and then we'll get into the disassembly. Now with my experience with Hondas and Acuras, for some reason, these are always in there way tighter or just rusted in there way more than they need to be. And you usually gotta take an acetylene torch, turn them bright red, and then you can fire them out. I actually got lucky on the other side and I was able to get it out with a Mat Pro. So this is a Mat Pro propane style torch. So you could try one of these or a propane style torch, but if you don't get this first try, you're probably gonna strip that out. So if you got an acetylene torch, maybe you just wanna start with that. But I got brave and tried this first. So I'm gonna go ahead, heat that up for about two minutes, and then I'm gonna take an impact with a Phillips on the end, and we're gonna fire these right out. All right guys, got the torch going. We're just gonna let it heat it up for about a minute or two and then we're gonna fire that thing right out. All right guys, I got that top one pretty warm. So I got a Phillips on a little extension on the end of my impact. I'm putting a little bit of force pressure into it right out. And there it is. We're gonna do the same thing for the other one. All right, you can see we got both of those rotor retaining Phillips screws right out of the rotor. So a little bit of heat always helps persuade them. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the disassembly of the caliper and the caliper bracket and all that. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the wheel this way. So I'm going to turn the wheel all the way this way so I have a lot better access to both of these bolts. So I can just get in there with an the impact and we can have as much work room as possible around those bolts. So we're going to turn the uh, wheel and then we're going to go ahead and get all this out. All right, so you can see we have the wheel completely turned and now we have better access to all the bolts we need to remove in order to get this rotor and these pads replaced. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with the caliper and the caliper bolts. Now these caliper bolts right here are 17 millimeter. All right, so I have a 17 millimeter on an impact. I'm just gonna go ahead, sneak in here, and then we're just gonna fire these right off. All right, we got both of these broken loose, so I'm just gonna go ahead and back these out with my hand real quick. And then we'll go ahead and slide this caliper off. All right, now if you're just doing the pads, you really could just slide the caliper off right now and maybe rest it up here gently. Maybe put like a, you know, a microfiber or something and rest it gently up there. But we're actually doing the rotors as well. So what we're gonna do is, and especially since this caliper is painted, I wanna put it to the side and, you know, I don't want anything to touch it. I don't want it to fall. I don't want anything to happen to it. So what we're gonna do is break this 12 mil right here this is the brake hose retainer bolt on this clamp, holding it right to the steering knuckle, okay? So we're gonna break this 12 mil loose and that'll allow us to pull the caliper off and then we're gonna rest it back here on the control arm out of harm's way while we do the rest of the job. All right, there we go, 12 mil out. All right, now we have our 12 mil out of the retainer clamp right there. We have both 17 mils out of the caliper. We're gonna go ahead and slide the caliper off. Should be able to rock it back and forth and it should just come right off. A little easier with two hands, but get it off with one. And there it is, guys. All right, guys, on the driver's side, I was able to seat the caliper right there on the control arm. We are on the passenger and the oil floater was kind of blocking it from really getting a secure seat on that control arm so to prevent it from falling i just had a spare bucket laying around and as you can see no tension on the brake hose and we just got it sitting right to the side out of harm's way just resting on that bucket all right so now that the caliper is out we can go ahead and remove the pads these should just pop right out all right so pads should just fall right out 
nothing too crazy. All right, we got the pads removed. And now all we need to do is remove this actual bracket, the caliper bracket, so we can go ahead and get the rotor off. So the caliper bracket is held in with two 19 millimeter bolts. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, put a 19 mil on an impact, and we're gonna fire those right off. All right, guys, and you wanna be careful because once these bolts are out, this whole bracket can just fall and hit the ground. So this one's painted, as I mentioned. The last thing we want this to do is fall and hit the ground and chip the paint or anything like that. So I'm gonna make sure this top one's in here. I'm gonna remove that bottom one completely and then we'll slowly take the top one out and then we'll lift the whole bracket right off. All right guys, bottom bolt is out. Just gotta finger loosen the rest of this top one and then bracket is completely free. All right, so now that we have the caliper bracket off, we can go ahead and get this rotor off. Now, lucky for me, this thing is free. See, we got a lot of rust coming out of the wheel hub, and sometimes that rust will actually rust weld the whole rotor to the wheel hub. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can get it off. If it isn't just freely moving like this and just, you know, be able to slide it right off, you could take a bolt. This is a M8 by 125. You can go ahead and screw this in one of the holes on the rotor. All right, you could do that. That'll create pressure up against the hub and it'll force this to come out. Or you could do something like taking a heavier, you know, three, four, five pound rubber dead blow, similar to this, and you can just hit it around the rotor and that'll typically free it up as well. A couple different ways, you know, actually really a few different ways you can get the rotor off and, you know, many ways to do it without damaging it. So there's a couple examples, but in our case, we can just slide it right off. And there it is. Rotor is completely removed. And now we have everything removed and we can go ahead and get all the new parts on. All right, so we have everything disassembled here. So rotor and everything is off now. Before we get back into the reassembly, we're going to clean all this up a bit. Now, as I mentioned, the caliper and the caliper bracket are painted so I'm going to clean those manually with soap and water and a microfiber just to get them clean but typically you could take some brake cleaner spray the caliper down spray the caliper bracket down and also spray the hub down so I want to take brake cleaner here and get this cleaned up a bit and just make sure you don't use this on anything painted because it will peel the paint up but there we go guys, we're just gonna clean all this up and then we'll get into the reassembly. All right, so I got everything cleaned up. I still have to do the caliper, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and retract the pistons on this and prepare it for the install. Now, there's a few different ways you can retract the pistons. You can get a brake caliper tool, you can get you know double C clamps, but being that this is a two piston caliper, in my opinion, a tool like this, this is a pad separator, it's probably gonna be your best bet. It'll slide right in between the caliper and then we can just start cranking it like a ratchet and it'll slowly create pressure and push the pistons right back into the caliper. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and then we'll retract those two pistons. All right, so I just have the caliper rested on my knee. I got this set up pretty much exactly how you want it. You want to have the actual middle part of this centered right with the middle and then this is even on both of our caliper pistons. So I'm just going to go ahead and start cranking this. And it's going to slowly push those pistons right back into the caliper. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the pistons retracted. All right, so I'm going to take the microfiber cloth and wipe this caliper down and get it clean. Because like I said, this is painted. But if it isn't, you could brake clean it. Or even if you wanted to, even if it isn't painted, you could still soap and water it. But if it's not painted, I would just go ahead and spray it with brake cleaner. But we're going to clean this up and then we'll get into the reassembly. All right, guys, so we got the piston retracted. Everything is cleaned up. So let's go ahead and get into the reassembly. So I have the new rotor here. Now, in our case, my customer went with some beautiful all black slotted and drilled. Now, typically when you buy new rotors, they'll have a grease coating around them and you'll have to brake clean them and wipe it off. So if you just have some, you know, advanced uh, or AutoZone style rotor, something like that, they'll have a grease coating. You're going to have to use brake cleaner and get off. And this particular rotor, it doesn't. I just wiped it down nicely with the microfiber and she's ready for install. So I'm gonna go ahead, slide this thing on and then I'm just gonna take our two retaining screws and since they're not stripped or damaged, I'm gonna put those back in and we'll have this rotor seated nice and in place and we can get everything back together. So let's go ahead, slide the new rotor on and then we'll get everything back assembled. 
All right, guys, new rotor. Just make sure you get your rotor screw holes to line up with the holes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, take one of these rotor screws, go ahead and start this thing off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these as tight as I can with my hand, finger tight. And then I'm just gonna take an impact and give it one turn to get it tight. So let's go ahead and get these finger tight and then we'll get them seated in. All right, so we got both of our rotor screws finger tight. So I got the same Phillips on an impact. I'm just gonna give it one, one trigger pull right there just to get it seated. And there we go, both of these are locked in. And now we can go ahead and get our caliper bracket and everything back on. All right, so I have the caliper bracket here. Now, one thing we want to do before we actually put this back on is just make sure this is all in order. So you want to check your guide pins here. Make sure they have a lot of easy movement with these pins. And in this case, both of these have a pretty good amount of movement. Um, on the other side, I have one that was kind of frozen. So you could take it out and use something like this, some caliper lube, and you can get that thing back greased up. But since these are moving pretty freely, I'm not even going to bother with them and they seem just fine. So the only other thing is the brake hardware. Typically, I like reusing the brake hardware. I like using the OEM hardware because most of the time it fits better than anything aftermarket and I'll just leave it and clean it up with a brake cleaner. In this case, he actually got some really nice all black hardware, which I've never seen before and it actually fits really well. So we're going to go ahead and install this new hardware here. It's going to be a little bit awkward one handed, but there we go. Got the one shim pushed in. Let me get the other one in. And then this will be fully ready, cleaned up, and we can go ahead and get this thing on. All right, so the bracket here, fully ready for installation. So you just want to gently slide that right back over the rotor. All right. Let that sit down into place. And I'm just going to take the top 19 mil. I'm going to get it started in there. And then once that seats, I'll let it hold it in place, and then we'll get that bottom one in. All right, got that top one going. Let's get the bottom one here. All right, so I got both of those started finger tight. I'm going to get them all the way in finger tight, and then we're going to torque both of those to spec. All right, guys, as you can see, both of our 19 mil caliper bracket bolts are in there finger tight. So now we're going to go ahead and torque these to spec, and the torque spec is 101 foot pounds. Okay, now I found mixed results online. I found some saying 80, some saying 101. I started on the other side, I went to 80, and then I tried it at 90, and then I hit it at 101, and 101 seemed like the right number. So um, you know, 80 is a good number to get it tight, but I think that 101 is the actual torque spec and that should get it perfectly snug. Like I said, it was fine on the other side. So torque spec for these 19 mils, 101 foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead, lock the torque wrench in 101 foot pounds, and we're going to get both of these 19 mils torque to spec. All right. So I have the torque wrench locked in 101 foot pounds. Go ahead and get these 19 mils torque to spec. Really shouldn't be too crazy tight. All right, there it is, 101. Get this bottom one here. There it is, 101. So both 19 mils torqued to 101, and now we can go ahead and continue with the reassembly. All right, so we have our brake caliper bracket bolts torqued to spec, so now we can go ahead and put our pads into the bracket. So before I put pads in, I typically like to put a little bit of... Um, brake component lubricant on there. So we're gonna put a little bit on all the contact points. So some on each edge, right where it's gonna make contact with the shims. And then when we put the uh, caliper on, we're gonna put a little bit on the contact points like the pistons and such as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on each corner of this and then we'll slide the pads right in. All right, so we got our pads all lubed up. Now, if you notice, there are two different style pads. You have one with the actual wear sensor which will grind once these get low and then you have one without it the one with the wear sensor goes in the back the one without it goes in the front so i'm gonna go ahead start with the rear one and then we'll get the front pad in all right guys got our pad here and she should just drop right in the place all right so we're just going to do the same thing for the front pad and then this will be all ready for the caliper There it is guys, sorry for the crap angle. But there we go, so pads are in. So now what we can do is take our caliper here, 
go ahead and grab this thing and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of caliper lubricant on the pistons and then right here on each contact point. So lubricant here, 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 and here. And then from there, we can go ahead and slide this thing right over the new pads. All right, so we have our little layer of lubricant around all of our contact points. So now this should just slide right over the pads. And if it doesn't, you might have to retract the pistons a little bit more, but there we go. Got it to go right over and pay attention to the actual um, slide pins here because they'll go right up against this line right here. So they do have a specific orientation. They should look like that. And now what I can do is grab a 17 millimeter brake caliper bolt. We'll go ahead and get this thing started. And then from there, we'll get the other one going and then we'll torque these to spec. All right, so 17 mils, finger tight. And now we're gonna go ahead and torque these to spec. Now I had the same issue with these 17 mils as I did with the bracket 19s, I found conflicting torque specs. One said 36 pounds, the other one said 53 foot pounds. I tried both, worked my way up, and 53 foot pounds was the number. So 53 foot pounds, that is a torque spec for the 17 mil caliper bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead, lock the torque wrench in, and we'll get these torqued to 53 foot pounds. All right, got that one locked in. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom one here, 53 foot-pounds. There it is, guys. Got both of those locked in, 53 foot-pounds. And the whole front here is now reassembled, so rotor should move without any noise. You just want to check that. Just go over all your work, make sure everything looks right. So this is fully back together, and the only thing we have to do now to finish this off is put this 12 mil right back in the retainer right here. So I'm just going to seat that, put the 12 in, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this snug with a ratchet. All right, so no need to really torque this. It's nothing crazy. I mean, I couldn't find the torque spec even if I wanted to, to be honest. So I'm just going to go ahead, snug that down, and then we'll be all done with the front. All right, guys, so we're on to the rear here. So same deal. We're going to go ahead and fire these lug nuts off, get the wheel off, and then we'll get into the disassembly. All right, so we got the wheel off. Now I'm going to approach the rear the exact same way I did the front. So I'm going to start with these Phillips heads retaining the uh, rotor. So we're going to go ahead, torch those up, heat them up probably for about two minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and fire those off with the impact. All right, guys, so as you can see, we got both of those Phillips screws retaining the rotor in there. So I definitely recommend heat. Heat is very persuasive, and you might even have to go as far as an acetylene torch, but that's how I did it. Heat them up, shoot them out with an the impact. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the disassembly of the rear brakes here. So, of course, we're going to start with the caliper. So the caliper bolts here are 12 mil. So I'm just going to take a 12 mil on a little ratchet and then I'm just gonna break these free and we'll get both of these 12 mils right out. All right guys, I just have a 3H drive ratchet with a small 12 mil, should be able to break this right free. Right, this one's kinda tight, there you go. I did the other side, it was a little tighter than the other side was, but no big deal. Go ahead and get this one as well. All right, got both of these broken loose, so I'm gonna back out both of these 12s, and then we're gonna get the caliper off. All right, guys, so we got both of these 12 mils out, so now we can go ahead and slide the caliper right off of the pads. And there we go, we got the entire caliper removed. And what I'm gonna do, because this is painted, remember, the front and rear calipers are painted, I'm just gonna take a paper towel, wrap it around the caliper for some protection. As long as it doesn't rip up there and I'm gonna seat it right there on the rear sway bar up against the bushing and there we go that should hold it nice and tight and that should be out of our workway and we can go ahead and get into the rest of the disassembly all right so now that we have the caliper nice into the side we can go ahead and continue with the disassembly of the rear brakes here so next step go ahead and pull the pads out so I'm just gonna pull the front and the rear pad out so we got the pads out now, and now we have just the bracket remaining, which has two 
17 millimeter bolts. You got one right there and you got one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, try to sneak an impact on the bottom one and then I'm gonna use a long extension ratchet on the upper one and I should be able to get both of these 17 mils free without a crazy amount of effort. All right guys, I was able to break this one free. I was able to sneak an impact in there to have just enough room to crack that one loose. So now I have a long one half drive extension wrench on this upper one and it should give you enough leverage to go ahead and get that thing started so now we got both of these broken loose so i'm just going to approach this the same as the front we're going to go ahead take out the bottom one and then once we remove that upper one it's also going to come free and it could just fall drop right down so i'm going to slowly inch out the top one and then we'll pull the whole bracket right off all right guys just finger threading that last top one out and i'm holding it so now we can just pull the whole bracket assembly right off all right so now that the bracket is off the rotor is the only thing remaining so we just got to go ahead and get this thing off now you want to make sure the e-brake is not engaged you do not want the e-brake engaged because the brake shoe inside is going to be up against the inside of the rotor and it's going to make it damn near impossible to get off and you could potentially damage the e-brake system trying to pull it off with an engage so make sure the e-brake is off and then once you have it off we can go ahead and approach removing this rotor now in my case i actually think the rotor is free you can see it's moving a bit on those lug nuts but this has a hub centric ring on here that's pretty much rust welded for being on there for so long from the wheel. So I'm just going to take a rubber mallet, three pound dead blow, and that should separate that up. And as you can see, it broke it free. Yeah, I know my hammer seen better days. But there it is. That was what I thought. Same thing was on the other side. Ring was holding it on, but now the rotor should be free and you can slide the whole rotor right off exposing the hub and the e-brake and now we can go ahead clean this up and get back into the reassembly all right so now that we have the rotor off we can go ahead and get into cleaning everything up so i have some brake cleaner here we're going to spray down the e-brake and the hub and everything in here get a nice even coat of brake cleaner in here pretty much the same thing we did on the front all right I'm also going to give the shoes just a little wipe down here. All right. All right, and like I mentioned quite a few times in the video, caliper and the bracket are painted. So I'm going to go ahead and wash the uh, bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. And what we're going to do now is retract the caliper piston on the rear caliper. And then from there, I'm gonna clean that up and then we can reassemble everything. So let's go ahead and get into retracting the piston. All right, guys, so I have this set up. Now this would probably be a little bit easier if you disconnected the bolt right there holding the brake hose right on. So it'd give you some more slack, but I decided to leave it connected. I got it on the other side. So I have a six inch C clamp and I have one of the pads, the rear pad back in the caliper just as even leverage while we're going to be using the c-clamp so the tool that i use in the front it's a little bit too thick and you know even a pad separator might be too uh big to get in here the one i actually have a couple and neither of them fit in here so this is the easiest way for me anyway to get the rear piston retracted so six inch c-clamp all right guys retracting it and the one end of the c-clamp is up against the rear brake hose bolt and then you just want this arm right here twisting right into the center of the pad. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, get this thing as flush and even as possible, and then we'll go ahead and get back into the reassembly. All right, guys, so we got the piston retracted in the caliper. We got everything cleaned up, so we're ready to go ahead and get into the assembly and get everything back together. So. I got the new rotor here. Remember I said that these have a coating most of the time when you have new rotors, you're gonna to have to clean that off typically with brake cleaner. Although in this case, this is a painted all the way around. I just wiped it down with a wet microfiber. So didn't wanna use brake cleaner on this particular rotor, but most of the time you can just get the coating of whatever grease is on there to keep the shelf life off with the brake cleaner. All right, now one more thing you wanna do with the rear rotor here is you wanna take this little grommet here right out of the old rotor so you can just take a flat head 
push it right into the rectangle in the center and push that right through. And what we're gonna do with the new one here, I'm just gonna go ahead, press it in a hair, and then should be able to take a flathead, start working it in. And there it is. Got it seated perfect. And now we can go ahead and put the rotor on. All right, so I got the new rotor here. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing slid on. Just make sure you get it aligned with the correct rotor screw holes. All right, so I got mine aligned there and there. And since we didn't tear ours up, damage them or strip them or anything like that, we're gonna go ahead and put ours back in and secure this rotor in with these Phillips screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these hand tight in, and then I'm just gonna lightly seat them in with the impact. All right, so I got both of those finger tight. I'm just gonna take the impact and lightly hit the trigger and just seat those in. All right, just one little turn, that's it. All right, and there we go, guys. Got both of our rotor screws holding that back in and retaining it. So now we could go ahead and get into the reassembly. All right, so we got our rotor back on, ready to go. So now, just wanna make sure our bracket's good and ready for installation. So, I already got this thing cleaned up, wiped down. I installed the new brake hardware shims, so they're good. And you do wanna make sure that your guide pins have good play. These are fine, they got a lot of play in them, so just make sure that they're good. And if not, like I said in the front, you could use some caliper lube right there. All right, and you could put it in here and get those good. But these are good, they got a lot of play, so I'm not gonna mess with them. So we can go ahead and get this bracket back on. So I wanna grab the 17 mils and we'll go ahead and get this thing started on. All right, so just gonna gently slide that over our rotor. And then I just wanna get this top one started here once I get it back into position. All right, all right, so got that top one going. Now that this, I'm gonna finger tight it, you know, almost all the way. There we go, got that thing seated. I'm gonna go ahead and get the bottom one on. And we'll get both of these 17 mils on the bracket here. Finger tight, and then we'll torque them the spec. All right, so we got both of our 17 mil bracket bolts finger tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque these to spec. Now the torque spec is 80 foot pounds, all right? So, got my torque wrench locked in, 80 foot pounds, and so we're gonna go ahead and get the 17 mil torque to spec. All right, guys, there it is. Got that thing torqued to spec. We'll go ahead and get the upper one torqued as well, and then we'll keep going on with the assembly. All right, so brackets fully torqued on, so we're gonna go ahead and get our pads in. So have these all prepped with the Disquiet lubricant on each part where it's gonna make contact with the shims on the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one of these in. So I'll start with the front on this. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop our front into place here. A little tighter than the front was but all right so front pads in we'll go ahead and get the rear one in and then we can go ahead and get our caliper ready for installation all right guys pads are in so we're almost done with reassembling everything we're just going to grab our caliper i'm going to put a little bit of the quiet lubricant on the piston of course and on the contact points right here on the front of the caliper so we're going to go ahead put some of that lubricant on there and then we'll go ahead and slide this right over the pads all right so i got the lubricant spread right there on the piston on the front of the caliper so we can go ahead and get this thing slid right over the pads now all right and there we go just the right amount retracted there so i'm going to grab our two 12 mil caliper bolts that go right into the guide pins Go ahead and get this top one started. I'll go ahead and get this bottom one going. I'm gonna get both of these finger tight and then we'll go ahead and torque these 12 mils a spec. All right, so we got both of our caliper 12 mils finger tight. So we're gonna go ahead and torque these a spec. Now the torque spec is 17 foot pounds. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, lock these 12 mils in, 17 foot pounds, and then we'll be done. All right, guys, got that one locked in. We'll go ahead and get this bottom one. All right, we got both of those 12 mils locked in, 17 foot-pounds. And now you just wanna give the rotor a spin. 
Make sure you don't hear any crazy scratching or anything from the hardware making contact or anything like that. But I think she's good to go, guys. Sounds good. Looks good. So I hope this helped with doing the brakes on your fourth gen TL. Make sure you stay tuned because you never know when I might be wrenching on this thing again. And until next time, guys.